Trust me, um, I didn't expect all of this. He's my very special <laughs> guest right here on Miss Kitty Live. Sir Hansel, good afternoon. How are you? Trust me, um, I didn't expect all of this. Now I gotta tell you, I'm still uh, on a euphoric high uh, from the Olympics. I'm still on Tokyo time, by the way, okay? Because I got up at 5 o'clock every morning, okay? And by the way, people, me don't know this time difference here. If you have to wake up, you just wake up. I just want to somebody. Because do what are we wake up for the whole Olympics? I'll know my body out of work. It no come back in that timing yet. But guess what? To support our athletes, to support our Olympians, if it meant that I had to get up at 4, I was up at 4 promptly perched in front of the TV because the race them never they go on I mean I see it with my own two eyes I don't want any after I don't want any delay I want it live and direct and I gotta tell you I am so proud of all our athletes and again I want to salute all of them all of them for all that they have done and all how they represent and how they represented the black the green and the gold but I gotta tell you that one uh in particular, I got to tell you, I know the parish, <laughs> St. Thomas, good afternoon to you. I know that you're very happy because what was a dream is certainly a dream no more. It is a reality because of Hansel George Parchment. Six days ago, Hansel won the gold medal in the men's 110 meter hurdles at the Tokyo Olympics. And he's my very special guest right here on Miss Kitty Live on an island Tuesday. Sir Hansel, good afternoon. How are you? Afternoon, afternoon. Yes, gold medalist, sir. I, I, I have to say, Sir Hansel George Parchment. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you. Well, let me just inhale all of that and let you just exhale and let me take this temperature and come right back to you. This is Nationwide Miss Kitty Live. Sir Hansel, thank you so very much uh, for being here on Miss Kitty Live. How are you feeling to be back home on Jamaican soil and, of course, to be back in St. Thomas with your people? Just excited. Trust me. Um, I didn't expect all of this. But um, it's, it's been good. It's been crazy. Yeah. I'm still tired, but, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, you know, enjoy myself and be a part of the whole fun. Absolutely. And when, when you came, when you touched down in at the airport, mm -hmm, uh, and you got that kind of reception, Hansel, uh, when you were leaving, a lot of people didn't even know when you boarded the plane. But when you yes, came back yes. to Jamaica, it was a completely different vibe and different welcoming. Talk to me about what that meant for you and what you achieved in Tokyo this year. Um, as everybody knows, it, it was a long journey. It was a tough journey leap of setbacks but I kept on pushing I believed in myself my coach believed in me and you know I have the support group and I have to just give God thanks for them yeah um, I love that Jamaica came out and really pushed with the support you know viral has been great and I'm not going to stop saying we have to continue to support all the athletes not just the winners yes because you know just a little bit of push from, from, from our loved ones and you know the fans can help somebody to do a much better performance. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And what was that like for you, Hansel? I mean, being in a stadium, no supporters, no spectators. How was that different for you this time around? To be honest, I, I, I didn't even think about that. That wasn't on my mind at all. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think it must have been good too because it could have caused distractions. Yes. But I was so focused on my lane. I didn't have anything else on my mind but getting in front. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're talking to Hansel Parchment this afternoon. The gold medalist. Olympiad. But that's Hansel. Love the vibe. Hansel. But that's Remember when we used to see you and some of them? You know, a fellow you alum Pelican family. Listen, yes, I am yes. so proud of you. Let me tell you, say, Ansel, you see, that, well, it was Tokyo in the day for you, but it was night in Jamaica. Let me yes. tell you something. To overrun a pandog in my house, my little most them catch me in a curfew. I'm going to ask you. I say, Ansel, you said, I see a show about. I said, I see Mr. Levy. Hey, I'll no matter what it called, but Jesus. Ansel, you're going with yourself, you know? Trust me, I love the vibes. Love Le the vibes. That's, Hansel. I'm just imagining. <laughs> 
you know, the, the run up and down, the screaming. <laughs> one, of my, one of my friends sent me a video of Kiran. He was watching it with his son and it was a straight vibe. Listen, vibe. it was just pandemonium because we were so grateful to you, so happy for you. But talk to me a little bit, Hansel, because I know that to your journey to the Olympics was not an easy one. And I like to get the backstory because I like when people know people's story. So when they see them yeah. glory, they can have a better appreciation for that. So talk to us about what happened with you regarding your training leading up to the Olympics. I started out pretty well. Um, my coach was even telling me, it's the fit he ever see me over all these years of training. And, you know, I kind of thought that was strange because when I was younger, I feel like I was stronger and fitter. But the, the background training started out really well. And then I think it was the first week of February, a stress fracture decided to come on to me. Yes. And to this time, we can't even figure out how we came out. I didn't have any accidents or anything like that. But I guess from the, the pounding and the standing and so on. And then after being in the pool, I, I started to learn to swim properly because I, I wasn't properly swimming. And um, big up to Coach Law down by the stadium pool. We did a lot of work. I was swimming with the youngsters. I think they were like, 10, year, 10 years old, maybe 11, mm -hmm. and I couldn't keep up with any of them. But that gave me a lot of long strength. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and kept me fit. So by the time the foot was all right to take some pounding again, I had enough fitness to make the team. And you know the whole story went. Yes. And the rest, as they say, is history. History. Yes. So when you got on the track, Hansel, uh, I know this is your race, this is your event, but of course, uh, you definitely, you know, it was an upset because of the other man, such man, mm -hmm. them think they're not going to take it. You understand? Yeah. And when you go so bomb, sir, Ergo one. Come on, I say hurdles. Ergo one. <laughs> Ergo two. Ergo three. I had a shut as a shut out. Uh, talk to me about what goes into the mind of an athlete when you are in the on your mark, get set, go position. I had a plan from before. You know, it, it was just God's blessing that I got to run with him for in the first two rounds, and I used that to analyze and, and, and just think about, you know, how I'm going to execute this final. Yeah. What do I need to do to catch him? Because I know he's going to leave me in the blocks. Yes. Up, up to now, I'm still amazed at how a tall man like him can get to hurdle too so fast. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm surprised how you get to the finish line so fast. I know I'm still asked, so I want one. That's true. Hey! I know I'm still a one. I want to do it. I want to go down. Dirt. Dirt. I <laughs> <laughs> And to me, not lie, but they said you come cross. Listen to what hey, I'm saying. Okay, but and to any of you that climb a tree, but now ask you, but say, hey, I'm going bad in my house. I'm going bad in the air. I tell you, if anybody me there catch with them, would have put me out. I'm not ask you, I'm going real bad. <laughs> Because I was so happy. I was so happy for you and so happy for Mr. Levy. And I'm like the gold and the bronze. And for two gentlemen who worked so hard. And of course, you know, a lot of people, you know, the man they never saw. You understand? So yeah. them two medal they you understand. Save the old. You understand? Yeah. The testosterone regime they saw. Right. So we were definitely very happy. But Hansel, when you went back to your room after the, you know uh, you know getting after getting away from the crowd and the noise and all the celebration what thought was more happy than I was um, I was looking through on a particular time that I had in my mind as well but I was really happy and then, you know I took a little time to give thanks to God for you know allowing me to to be there in the first place yes and you know that was just amazing for me Absolutely. Your goddaughter was very proud of you and she expressed her sentiments. Your father as well expressed how proud he is to be the father of a gold medalist of an Olympian. Talk to me about what is your family saying, your community, just St. Thomas on the whole. I don't know if you saw the excitement yesterday. Mr. Peace, bits of pieces. <laughs> <laughs> we had a whole lot of excitement that I didn't prepare for, I didn't expect to have. Mm -hmm. But um, Merchant went all out with that, one of my family members. And I saw the people come out and 
they supported me. And St. Thomas have always been supporting me, so I have to always big up St. Thomas. Absolutely. Well, now they have two heroes, I would say. They have Paul Bogle and they have Hansel Parchment. How about that? <laughs> so, you know, Paul Bogle walk and uh, Hansel Ergel. I just say it go. Yes. Right, yes. this is she. And we just love it. And it's absolutely uh, amazing. In terms of, you know, the win for you, Hansel, uh, it, it means a lot, I'm sure. In terms of youngsters who are thinking about becoming an athlete, uh, hurdling is not necessarily the, one of the sex events, you know, or the first. First choice for a lot of people. Uh, what would you say to someone, a young man or young lady, who is thinking about, boy, you know, following in the footsteps of Hansel Parchment and Ronald Levy? Well, to be honest, I'd, I'd like to see more people taking on the not so traditional events. Mm -hmm. I feel like we have a host of talent all around, and you know, we, we, we could have a lot more gold medalists. And, you know, a lot more champions in the other events. So, I'll tell them, you know, all of we run fast, all of we want to run fast. But let us try the other, the other events as well. Um, you know, you can make a living from it. So many good things can come from it. So, let us test out some of the other events. And you, you could be great at it. You don't know. All right, let me let me ask you, Mr. Olympian, gold medalist, sir. Uh, like, if I wanted to try out for Paris 2024, which event would you recommend for Miss Kitty right now? Miss Kitty? May I try out for it? Yeah. Well, I'm well, full of excitement. <laughs> and from what I see, you look like a full of power, too. Hey! Why? So, it looks like you could show the discourse. Hey, see it there? See it there? The boss, yeah. seal it. The boss, yes, seal it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? This morning in the gym, Hansel, I was doing, they put me in a pyramid thing, right? So I was yeah. um, pressing 20 pounds per hand, okay? I did like 12 sets of that. Then I did 8 sets of 20. Then 12 sets again. And I did like 200 meters of rowing. So yeah, in a minute. So, you know. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about too. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to come and train with you one of these days, Hansel. And We're ready. You, <laughs> and, you know, this, with this kind of vibe, uh, training must be... The best. I'm telling you, la 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 la. <laughs> Mother Road, I gotta tell you, Miss Kitty Olympian Road. Hey, man, I tell them, could hold me at Jamaica. Man, I ask exactly. you, man, I ask you, any home go Olympics 2024 and throw all the javelin. Hey, look here now, I want to walk on the water tap, come back. Man, I ask you, I gotta tell you. But Hansel Parchment is my very special guest uh, this afternoon, gold medal winner in the men's 110 uh, meter hurdles at the Tokyo Olympics. It was such a gratifying, uh, you know, experience for all of us i know that we cheered we la we were just so you know enthralled we we're so excited and we just want to send to love respect and salutations to all our athletes and we want to thank you guys so very much for all of your sacrifice your hard work your dedication your blood sweat and tears because we know it is not easy and you know we've learned that you know uh, you don't get paid to go to the olympics and when you go and you give your all it does mean a lot now so some of the major conversations coming out of Tokyo are uh, locally uh, in the line of, you know, among you know, athletes and persons talking about, you know, the fact that athletes don't get paid uh, to perform at the Olympics or participate in the Olympics, rather. Uh, now they have to use, uh, you know, market themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to me about, you know, some of that, because not only are you an athlete, but you are a business, right? And so we have to think about the marketing and the business aspect of that. What do you say to young athletes or even athletes at your level uh, now in terms of coming out of this? What do they need to take into consideration? Well, I think we, we need to strike while the iron is still hot. Yeah. When we do well like this, it's it's almost like getting a PhD and you can get a bigger job with a bigger pay. So, you know, we just need to take advantage of those things, um, get the right help, ask the right questions, make sure you have everything sorted out and, you know, keep pushing forward. Yeah. Absolutely. And Usain Bolt, uh, you know, the iconic Usain Bolt, uh, you know, made, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, on his Instagram, made a statement on his Instagram about, you know, the support that is necessary uh, for co by corporate Jamaica. How important is, you know, support from corporate Jamaica, corporate sponsors to not only log on to the athletes when they win, but from their embryonic stages, from when they're just starting out? That, that is something that we, we always talk about, that when we, when we win, everybody jump on board, everyone is happy, and that is, that is fine, but 
we need more support. Yeah. Right? We have so much talent that, you know, like some guys get injured and then because they don't have the right treatment or they don't have the money for treatment in the first place, they yeah. fall right out. Yeah. And we could have them in the Olympics dominating. We could have getting one, two, three in more than one event. Yeah. So I feel like if they come on board earlier, support the athletes, create some kind of system where we can get proper treatment and so on, food program especially. Yes. I think we will see a lot more talent coming out of Jamaica. We can have a bigger team going and coming back with a lot more medals, competing against big countries like the U.S. and, and China in medal contention. Absolutely, and that is well, definitely well articulated. Martin Bay High School, I know that the persons there are very happy. Uh, what, you know, what does it mean for your school, for your community? What have they said, your alumni, your people them? What am I say? <laughs> As I said, they feel like they're more happy than I am. <laughs> Trust me, they, they big me up all the time, even before now. The support has been real. They have been a real foundation in, you know, to where I am today. Yes. So, Always giving thanks to them, and we hope that you know we can keep working and pushing out more youngsters who are doing well in all different levels. All right. Well, guess what? We're going to take the news right now, Hans. But there is an even bigger story uh, that has come out of your uh, wonderful, uh, magnanimous win in the uh, Tokyo Olympics. You know, that of the Good Samaritan. Uh, and yeah. we definitely want to talk about that because that story made me cry. When I watched <laughs> your Instagram, I was like, is this a movie or what is happening right here? Listen to what I'm telling you. Real life tears. And we've been talking about it. We're going to take the news and then we're going to delve into that my very special guest right here on miss kitty live hansel george parchment the gold uh, gold medal winner for the men's 110 meter hurdles at the 2020 tokyo olympics feeling so good and it's a great right feeling now, yeah. and i gotta tell you he has definitely seized the opportunity and that is the uh, motto of his past high school morant bay high school carpe diem seize the opportunity and he indeed seized it in tokyo 2020 he is my very special guest right here on miss kitty live and it is definitely an honor to be talking to hansel parchment this afternoon now hansel a lot of us saw your video of you telling us that you took the wrong bus ended up at the wrong place whilst at the place you realize that oh my god this is not where i need to be this is some aquatic area aquatic region and i'm not into water i'm on dry land so this is not where i need to be fortunately you saw someone and she helped you and she gave you some money so that you could take a vehicle to go to the um to where you your stadium where you have where you ought to have been do your warm up and see there now you won please walk us through all of that for those of us who are for those who may not have seen the video well i, I was listening to some music which music walking up to the bus i was playing some kirk franklin actually oh well oh, glory hallelujah <laughs> Yeah, Christian so answer. Uh, uh, let me let me say that. Not not fully. Okay. Halfway. All right. Amen. God is good. Not a problem, honey. Go to church, honey. <laughs> We're there with you. Psalms twenty three. Go ahead, yes, sir. Yes. yes. So we are listening to Kirk Franklin because the mommy always played that um, when I was younger. So yes. Um, I saw the sign because at each stop they have like a sign. And at the top of the sign, it said athletic track. Mm -hmm. So I didn't check to see what was on the bus or anything like that. I saw the athletic track. The bus was in that, that parking spot, so I just walked in. Yeah. Now, I'm in the phone again. And I saw a girl come in, actually. I saw a girl come in with something in a pouch. When I look back to see it, I was wondering, what is this? It's not a pole vault. It's no <laughs> throwing implement. Mm -hmm. And I should have get a hint from there. But when I turned back and looked, I didn't see anybody else with anything like that. Yes. So I said, all right. I played it off. Back in the phone because I'll check some more Kirk Franklin songs. Mm -hmm. um, like halfway through the journey, when I woke up my head, I realized I'm seeing a lot of industrial looking place. Mm -hmm. Factory and everything. I mean, I said, it's not look right. 
So I start to text Coach O'Keele and I say, Coach O'Keele, you know, so I don't feel like I'm on the right bus though. Mm-hmm. And he must say, don't panic. And he send me Coach Wilson number, say, if anything, me to link him. You know, or tell him, to just jump back on the bus and come back to the mm-hmm. village. Anyways, I get there now. And the only way I can get to the track now is if I go back to the village first. And that's, that's going to take way too long. Yes. So then I try to talk to the volunteer them to get one of the cars, because they have a whole branded cars. Yes. But because them strict regime, they have to order the vehicle from long before, and they wouldn't allow that. But then I decided, you know what? I'm going to see if we can get a taxi. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask the girl if she has some money. Because they were, they were mentioning taxi to me before, but I was saying I don't have any money. So I can't take no taxi. Yes. You know what I mean? So, but I decided, you know, I'm just going to ask. Were, were, ask you, were you panicking at that time at all, Hansel? I mean, what was going through your mind at that no, point? No, I was, I was relaxed. relaxed. Oh, wow. Never start panicking. I'm going to tell you the panic part now. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Before we reach it up. She, she actually hired to give me the money because they were not really allowed to do them thing there. Right. And then she walked me all the way to the front. She being, the, she the, being Tiana? Yes. Okay, so what, first of all, Hansel, what drew you to her? Why her? Well, she was the only one who could have speak English. Okay. And the actual, the other volunteers took me to her. So. A God put her there, so I'm going to ask you. You're going to say an angel that. For real. Mm-hmm. She walked me all the way out the front. And then we got to a checkpoint where she couldn't exit because she had on a radio thing. Mm-hmm. And she not allowed to go out with it. And she was trying to ask one of the other security and some of the soldiers to hold it. But nobody would take it from her. Because they know them getting a trouble easy if they not follow rules and regulations. Right. Them not bad getting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she had to ask another guy now to take me to the, the taxi. And, you know, them do them exchange. I mean, I understand nothing we're going on. And the man bring me to the taxi. He explained to the taxi man where, where I want to go. Mm-hmm. Jump in the taxi and take off. And the man has speed. Mm-hmm. So get me to the truck. And then we start to back some familiar places now. And I say, all right, yes, we live on the right road. Yes. We're going to go to track now. And then we woke up on some traffic. This is when we start fret now. Mm-hmm. Because we realize that the traffic are, are walking pace. Mm-hmm. And I say, Jesus, I look on the time every minute. And I say, I wonder if I have enough time for warm up. Mm-hmm. And I can't afford to miss this. Yes. You know what I mean? People are saying, and to take wrong but and miss the, the semis. That all sound good. Mm-hmm. But um we eventually got through the traffic, made it to the, the track and I had to run to the warm up. Couldn't go through my normal routine. You know, normally I want to warm up first and then put on my body suit afterwards because I didn't really want to sit up before. Mm-hmm. But me have to chew on that same time. Yeah. And start work. You know, and made it through the to the finals and that was the end. And you know, it was awesome, trust me. Boy, I'm not telling a round of applause for Tiana. Um Miss Um Stokovic, good afternoon. I know it is morning in Tokyo and we're sending you love. Yeah, we your cousin right about now. I'm not telling a lie. My li- hey, Mr. Ansel, when me had listened to your story and when I was watching it, all we come to my mind a Bujubantan song, Destiny. Hey, Mr. Father God, thank you. Bless the lady there. May our bread basket never empty. I said, Jesus, if we could have came right here. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not like the lady. I'm not Father God, thank you. Because as you said, those places are very strict, you know what I mean? And she could get in problems. And the fact that she stepped out to help a total, complete stranger that was so gracious of her. And trust me, on behalf of Jamaica, we are so very grateful to her. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Have you spoken? And, and, and I must also commend you, Hansel, for being kind enough grateful enough to go back to her to thank her because some persons would have taken the opportunity or you know the kindness and just kind of you know gone along their merry way they won their medal and they're off about their business but the fact that you went back it also spoke to us or showed us your character and the decent dignified young man that you are and i was really proud of you and happy that you went back to say thank you Blessings, man. Blessings. Yeah. I, well, I had told her I would have carried back her money. You know. 
Yeah. And she was insisting that, you know, it's all right. You don't have to carry it back. Yeah. yeah. But I told her I'm going to come back afterwards. So. Well, you're a man of your word, you know, and that's great, really great because, again, some persons, you know, would have just taken the money and even though they said that they were going to go back, they would not have gone back. And not only did you go back and bring her her money, you brought her a lovely gift. And I'm quite sure that she's so appreciative uh, based on her, you know, response to you um, in the video. Or have you been in contact with her uh, since you've been back to Jamaica? Yeah, actually, I said she wanted to do the interview. Yeah, what she say? Um, she replied saying that she's not very good in English. Her English is not good for children. Tell her something can't talk slow. She's willing to. <laughs> she's willing to do it. Yeah, tell her something. Miss Kitty said, "Big up." Tell her it's a goodie. Miss Kitty said, "Big up." I'll talk very slow and take time, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I'm I'm very happy for you, Hansel. And you know, just that kind of kindness, uh, it really helped to you know uh, reinforce that you know there are good people in the world. And just like how we are good people, there are great people all around. And it's just so good when God can put them in the right place at the right time and send the help when you need it. Because trust me, that could have gone a complete opposite way and we would not be here this afternoon uh, giving God thanks and the praise. A lot of people are saying, Ansel, you are married, she better come out of the man life. Come out of the man life. <laughs> come out. You know, but it was you really, them get too much trouble, Ansel. But Ansel, what are we, Shelly, I do use as Mary Queen dog, they're not even Mary Queen like oh, Mary Queen. Man. Talk to when, me. When Shelly, when Shelly came and said, you know, she want to straighten up her hair. You couldn't say no. Yeah. Shelly a star. I, it's a ah, real I'm a, boss. I'm a real ma model Latino man. Nice. Nice. And I really must say big up to Oblique and the entire team, you know. Yes, uh, and when I saw you sitting there so patiently, I'm like, Hansel is the man. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, the executive wig. <laughs> yeah. I got to tell you, that was really nice. What was the vibe like in the among the Jamaicans there, Hansel? Uh, you know, this time around, a lot of different, uh, you know, rules, protocols with the, uh, the whole COVID. What was this like in terms of the team spirit uh, there on the ground? Despite all of the, the restrictions, it was still a good vibe. Um, we couldn't bundle up as normal, but we made it work. You know, we supported everybody. And, you know, we just kept the vibe high. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of social media, because I know uh, some of the comments were very unsavory. Uh, how did you, how do you deal with those things? Uh, you know, how or the other athletes, uh, you know, about whom or against whom comments were levied? Uh, what was the vibe like? How did you guys deal with the negativity uh, and cope with that? Well, me personally, not too affected by these things. Because I always try to keep it positive. And mm. because I know that this is nothing new, we've been seeing these things over the years. Um, it's a lot of time when athletes don't do well or not doing too well, and then people are against them and all of that, and then forget all of the good that they did before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I try to rem remind the, the other athletes that, you know, people are always talk. Can't watch that. Just focus on what you need to do and give your best each time. Yes. Yeah. And, and what would you like to say to those persons who, you know, leave these comments sometimes, Hansel, and not realizing how uh, hurtful they can be, you know, and the negative impact they can have on others? Well, they already know. People talk to him all the time. I hope they, they see because they're the same ones who come and congratulate us when we do well. Yeah. So they, they need to remember that keep it on the support side, leave the negativity. Because you want the athletes to do well. You want them to continue to do well. They're not going to do well if you um, full up their mind with negativity. Yeah. So keep it positive. Keep it push, pushing them forward. Nice. So have you invited Tiana to Jamaica, by the way, Hansel? I did. Oh, yeah? Did. So when she yeah. come, and say not talk. And say not talk. You're not talk to Auntie Miss Kitty. And say not talk. You're not tell me, Hansel. Tell me, oh, you going to? Yeah, man, we invite her and her family, man. All our family, them? Yeah. So, Auntie, so when they come, coming, we have to prepare up. We're going to plan it. Yeah, Auntie, we could know, we could whitewash the place, clean up the place, get curtain on them, something there, and do the things them. We have to make them feel good, because we want them to come and feel good and nice. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, how, how excited is she, is she at the invitation? Well, she's very happy. She, can't, she actually can't believe that 
I said she can come mm. that I'm inviting her. That tell her, said Jamaica. Uh, tell her, said Jamaica, invite her. Tell her, said Alandra Olness. We've not said nothing. Tell her, yeah. <laughs> tell her, everybody. Everybody wants to have a come. Tell her, for come. Yes, for real, for real. yes. Tell her, all of us welcome her. You understand? I feel if I make um, Adam, some of us should stay. We have the other places to stay. She can't, yeah, we're funny. We're funny. <laughs> she can't stay outside. And and speaking about Adam, uh, you know, the sandals, the world's best to deserves the world's best. Uh, you know, yeah. giving all the athletes a vacation, uh, you know, at the sandals resort of your choice. Have you chosen or decided which uh sandals resort you want to stay as yet? I haven't thought about it yet. I still have a few more races. So I kinda wanna lock in on those. True. I want to go out and give some more performances and you know, make everybody proud, myself proud as well. Very well. And then afterwards, I can pick on all of that. What's Hansel Parchment's mantra? What keeps you grounded? What keeps you motivated and inspired? So many things. So many things. But I always try to maintain mental toughness. Um, remembering the people who are always there and making sure that I keep pushing forward every time. And what would you say is the most valuable lesson you learned from the Tokyo Olympics? Gratitude. That, that, that I would say is the main thing. You know, just giving thanks as well as the more love you put out and the more thankful you are, it will come back to you. Yeah. 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 We're so proud of you, Hansel. Like, I, I have no, I don't have enough superlatives to properly articulate how happy we are, how proud we are of you, happy for you, how grateful we are to you uh, for lifting up a nation, for lifting up yourself as a young man, you know? I think representation is very important. And I know there, the people in St. Thomas, there are many little boys and many little girls who are looking at you and saying, you know, if Hansel Parchment come from St. Thomas and can go to Tokyo, go win a gold medal in other hurdles, I can mm -hmm. do it too. Oftentimes, yeah. there are some parishes or communities that may not necessarily have you know uh, someone to whom they can look but when you come from there and they see Hansel from Morant B you know high school you know do mm -hmm. it I'm sure that th that kind of pride and dignity that they now have because of you is very important and it plays on their psyche and in their minds you know good things can come from St. Thomas good people great people iconic people can come from these parishes and so yeah. your win is such a great win in in so many ways it has a ripple effect and i'm really happy for you and i know what it's like to you know work hard and the blood the sweat the tears everything where you yes, go through yes. you know when others count you out you know you have to still count yourself in when others think you don't deserve it or you're not worth it you have to take it to new city and big up father god straight you know and so yes. when i see you cross when i saw you cross the finish line trust and believe me tell you say hey hey Listen to me. It was definitely amazing. And I know uh, everybody on my Instagram is cheering for you right now. Everybody on my Facebook Live. Everybody on Nationwide's uh, YouTube channel. And I'm sure everybody listening in Radio Land um, is cheering for you. So tell us your itinerary, uh, um, Hansel, because we want to cheer for you and watch you where possible so we can you know, send you the positive energy. Uh, where can we see you next? And what is your schedule looking like now? I was thinking about... Three more races. Which part? So it's going to be Paris, okay. Lausanne, Paris, Lausanne, and Zurich. All right. So them they come on yeah. TV? Should. Okay. So they're, they're all Diamond League, I believe. Oh, Diamond League? All right. So Paris, Lausanne, and Zurich. I got to tell you. <laughs> for pronounce Zurich. Yeah, pronounce it properly. Of course, no? I know. I'm saying what I mean to pronounce. I miss the pronouns. That's why I said Tiana can come over here because Auntie Miss Kitty will take my little time uh, because, you know, we want to express our gratitude to her because Ansel, she was a very important angel in the whole episode here.
Really, really. You know, but thank you so very much as well for sharing that story and for being grateful enough and go back uh, to say thank you to her. Hansel, I know you have many fans right now. I know you've gained a lot since your win as well. Uh, what would you like to say uh, to, you know, your supporters, your support system, your family members, your fans, your supporters, your well-wishers, your prayer warriors who I'm sure have lifted you in prayer? Well, keep the support going. Um, I will give my best every single time I step out to make you proud, to make myself proud. You know, I'm most grateful for all the support. I can't be thankful enough for everybody who stayed there and supported me despite all of the, the setbacks. Um, even it looked like I wouldn't have made it. And, they, you know, they stuck by and made sure to keep motivating me. Even though... I usually strong when you come out to those things, and I really worry myself too much. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are a lot of people who have been a rock to lean on and to make sure that you know I keep that tunnel vision. And I just want to say thanks, thanks, many thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what about thanks? Yes. Well, well, Hansel, it would be remiss of me and two minutes want them, me not want them eat my head because me can't earn so fast and me can't run so fast yet, right? Yes. The yes, ladies, yes. the ladies all want to know, Hansel, are you single? Are you the most eligible bachelor right now with the gold medal around his neck? What's going on, Hansel? They want to know. know. Keep that a secret. Boy, answer the girl, them say, you yeah, yeah, them ventilator right now, no, you yeah, them cornflakes, <laughs> them booty fruit, yeah, that, them I say, you yeah, the girl, them say, are you, you know, Hansel? <laughs> them I say, are you? And them I walk about her. Uh, Sent a mass, like how Paul Bugley walk up a town, they walk up a yeah. got so I don't know. Oh so are you single handsome? What's going on? Are you eligible? What's going on? The girls are asking, the ladies. They yeah, want to know. keep that a secret, man. I'm not ready for they reveal it yet. Answer, why I keep it a secret? No, I reveal it yet, man. You don't want to reveal it yet? All right, what kind not of... Saying it. Okay, what, what, who would make an ideal wife for you or ideal girlfriend? No, you see, actually, I get me... No, I'm not getting you in trouble. I'm just asking for characteristics. That's all I'm asking. It's a little cross-examination. <laughs> all the good things that everybody always wants. You know, you know the vibes. <laughs> I just say you know the vibes. I got to tell you, ladies, I tried. I asked, I tried. But he's keeping it a secret. But we will know sooner or later. But Sweet Hansel, yes. enough love to you, sir. Lots of respect. Thank you so very much for all that you have done, for all that you have achieved. And may God continue to bless you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. May you continue to thrive and strive in as many ways as possible to continue to lift up your family, continue to lift up your parish, continue to lift up your community, continue to lift up Jamaica, continue to lift up yourself. And of course, may you continue to be as wonderful as you are and may all the great things in life come upon you because you have done your work thank you very much yeah thank, you, thank you hansel and uh lots of love every time much respect and when tiana is ready to talk you know just let her know auntie miss kitty's here you know what i'm saying tell her these are like a sister in law you understand she can just come across boom bang and these things like we are carrying a jerk festival we are carrying a run robin we are carrying a one look at dead yard because you don't know she forget a little you understand the history you have carrying a two look at drumming you understand yeah Excellent. which Excellent. part again we can carry a answer well, dream weekend now, but I keep back, so that's out for right now. <laughs> but yeah, that gone already. Right. So can carry go get to a curry goat. We can carry like a fate pen, Dun's River. You understand? I'll go to the place. I want to I want to have care go Reggae Falls over St. Thomas Part and Bart. She she have go St. Thomas. Exactly. We have care go about and and some ready for the trip. I'm ready for the trip. I'm ready <laughs> okay. for the trip. All right. But Hansa, take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule because I know you are in demand. So thank you so much for your time. All the best to you and yours. Thank you and have a no wonderful respect, afternoon. No respect. respect, Hansa. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Hansa George Parchment. The gold medalist in the men's 110 meter hurdles right here on Miss Kitty Live.